Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. With over 15 years in the food and beverage industry, food manufacturing company Trojan Foods has expanded into packaging services in response to the increased demand for specialized packaging solutions in the industry. Melissa Zisengwe tells us more. Trojan Foods was primarily focused on producing goods in bulk for application in big kitchens across the catering industry, from mines to hospitals and so forth. Trojan Foods is primarily a, we are a food manufacturing business. We've been in the industry uh, in various uh, shapes and forms for probably the past uh, 15 years. Um, I got involved in the business about eight years ago. Um, and the business primarily at that time was focused on, and still remains focused on, manufacturing dry powdered goods, uh, which you can split into, you know, your sweet powdered goods such as your dessert powders and jellies and custards, and your savory uh, products such as your gravy, soups, soya minces, and the like. Sitati tells us how Trojan Foods goes about testing food quality of their products. The company is certified with the Food Safety System Certification 22000 Certificate for Food Safety and Quality Management. We've got an in-house lab um, which tests every single batch that we, or that we manufacture. We've got a quality control team uh, which is led by a quality assurance manager and um, they make sure that everything that we do adheres to uh, the standards and the specifications that we've set. Trojan Foods recently acquired machinery that will enable the company to offer packaging and blending services to existing clients and attract new clients. We've recently started a new division which is uh, in contract packing and packaging to offer some of our clients and customers an outsourced uh, opportunity. We placed primarily uh, out of this facility in Weinberg, Johannesburg, uh, but we supply and manufacture products across the country. Although Trojan Foods is expanding into the packaging industry, it has not been immune to the realities of the economy. The raw materials used by Trojan Foods are agro-based, exposing the business to economic factors like price shocks caused by adverse weather. The major issue is that we, most of the goods, if not all of them, are, are agricultural products. So we deal with mostly commoditized goods uh, uh, as our inputs. As a result of that, we constantly exposed to the volatility in the prices of our inputs. For example, we recently had a drought 18 to 24 months ago, which had a quite a negative impact on our input costs. Um, that's, that's actually quite, quite a big risk and a challenge for us because as a business, you don't always have the agility to be able to pass on so those price increments uh, to your customers on time. So it can have a, put a bit of pressure on your cash flow. Um, also what I'd probably see as a positive challenge is that we are a growing business, um, but with that comes the beauty of having to fund that growth. Other news making headlines, CSIR makes progress on first African climate change model and new rules needed to facilitate transition to decentralized electricity system. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is making progress in developing the first Africa-based Earth System model to provide reliable projections of the potential impact of climate change on the continent. The CSR is contributing to the assessment reports of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, and in fact we have no less than three CSR researchers serving as coordinating lead authors or lead authors on the assessment report number six of the IPCC. Our continent, we are particularly vulnerable to climate change variability and change. South African Local Government Association President Park Stau has called for an overhaul of the policy and regulations governing electricity supply in South Africa to facilitate a transition towards a more decentralized electricity system. We know the challenges we face, including decarbonization, decentralization and digitalization. The transition is also not simply a transition of the energy sector. The impact of the transition will transform our economy, create employment opportunities, protect our environment and climate, and improve the quality of life of our citizens. Every sector of society has a role to play and all of us in the energy sector need to lead the transition for the benefit of all our citizens. 
That's Cremo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.